Hello, patriots and random human beings. We're back to Sparkle Dot. We're gonna play another round of Crash Bandicoot here. I kept dying last time. Hopefully, that won't be the case this time. I gotta make sure that I can get past this blowy torch head man. There we go. I did it. And uh, we're playing the game back as normal because last time I was failing so hard that I had to recoup and uh, make sure that I uh, knew what exactly what I was doing. Otherwise, I would just look like a fool. And, of course, you don't want to watch a man look like a fool on national YouTube television. Of course, that sounds like a bad idea. What's the point of doing that when you can just watch uh, America's Funniest Home Videos hosted by Bob Saget and later Tom Selleck if you want to watch people being a fool. Or you can just go to YouTube and search in top 10 fail compilations of 2015. You'll see all the same things of people failing like... Uh, falling off of skateboards and maybe racking themselves on skateboards or uh, going down a rail on a skateboard and uh, hitting themselves in the testiclides or uh, maybe they were just riding a skateboard and they accidentally hit a cat as they were doing like a kickflip ollie or something like they like to do with the uh, kickflips and the ollies whatever oh that was new okay so we're going back so the ollies and the kickflips and the skateboards, or uh, maybe if you wanted to watch a man who was not so good at skateboarding, like a fat person. There was one video that I saw of a fat person on a skateboard. What he did was he uh, got on the skateboard, he started sliding around on it, and then, um, <coughs> pardon me, he fell off and started running because he couldn't control his fat, like, momentum. You know, fat people have momentum. It's something that normally normal people don't have is momentum. Uh, fat people have momentum too. Uh, and he ran face first into a car. It was the funniest thing I ever saw, and I laughed real hard at it, even though I felt real bad about the whole thing. Because I mean, like, it wasn't like I was the one who set him into the skateboard with the car. It was his own gosh dang fault. But uh, he did the whole thing anyway. So anyway, skateboarding, huh? How about that? I used to skateboard as a kid, and uh, I haven't skated since I was eight years old, but uh, I used to be real good. I used to kick flip ollies and pre press triangle to grind on uh, on uh, rails and stuff, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and I used to play as Bob Burnquist all the time, listening to Goldfinger on my radio. My radio would play Goldfinger. They talked about being a Superman. It was a good... It was a good uh, a good song, Goldfinger Superman. Goldfinger is a ska band, of course. They were introduced real early into the uh, whole ska thing. Ska is one of those genres that's gone through multiple waves, of course. And, uh, and, uh, I think Goldfinger might have been from the third wave of ska. Ska started in, like, the 80s when, um, when Florida people would receive irregular radio broadcasts from Mexico and Belize and Cuba and Cozumel and uh, Tobago and Trinidad and Granada and the Caribbean. Excuse me. They would receive a regular radio broadcast and it would make the, uh, the tempo of the song sound a little bit different than what you would think it should sound like and uh, because of that irregularity, people thought that maybe we should get the idea of uh, making that into real music because I like the sound that real music makes. But Ska likes to change tempo real fast, so we'll do that, and that'll sound good if uh, we do it correctly, that is. So, one of the most notable, one of the most notable Ska bands from the 90s was uh, Real Big Fish. Now, if you know anything about Real Big Fish, they starred in several movies in the 90s called uh, uh, Basketball and Orgasmo, which were both real good movies. They were both made by Matt Stone and Trey Parker, the guys who did South Park, and they were real funny because Matt and Trey know comedy, and they also did one called Cannibal the Musical, even though it had nothing to do with Real Big Fish, I just thought I'd bring that up. And Cannibal the Musical is something you can go watch on Netflix. It was actually produced by Troma Films, and Troma's notable for making purposely bad, uh, purposely bad B-films, basically. And uh, one example of something that they did was called, uh, uh, Warrior Nymph and Dinosaur Hell, or something along those lines. I don't remember exactly what it was because I watched it with some friends. We thought it might have been porn, but then it wasn't porn, so we stopped watching it because it was not as cool as we thought it would be. I mean, porn is great, but uh, if you're expecting to see something that is porn and then it turns out it's just about dinosaurs eating people, you might as well watch Jurassic Park because that's a much better film. Jurassic Park by uh, Steven Spielberg, of course, written by Michael Crichton. It's a good series of books 
actually, let me tell you what. Um, they're coming out with a new Jurassic Park film called Jurassic uh, World. And it's basically like SeaWorld, but with dinosaurs. So if you're into that kind of thing, it's actually starring, it's Chris Pratt, who is in Zero Dark Thirty, and he was also Andy Dwyer on um, Parks and Recreation. Good TV show. It just ended this year, so go watch it. It's a good TV show. You should go watch it. I uh, recommend that and The Office and Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Let me tell you what, those are both good, uh, I was going to say movies, but they're not movies, they're TV shows. So go watch those. They're real good if you're looking for a new TV show to watch. it's uh, That's the way you should take it. Because those are both written by... Uh, Oh, I can never remember the guy's name, but he played uh, Moe's on The Office. Uh, oh, oh, could never tell you. Um, I'm having to a total brain fart right now, but Moe's on The Office, and then uh, Gary Scott or something, I don't know. It's been such a long time since I looked at the IMDb entries on these sorts of things. Um, the good shows, and I like them a lot, they were both, like I said, written by the same guy on NBC, the same company that brought you such shows as uh, Seinfeld and the Michael J. Fox program, which of course was the best show they ever released. They should have never canceled that show. It only ran for like one season or two. I don't remember. But uh, Michael J. Fox, of course, Marty McFly from Back to the Future, something you know, you all know that I love, Michael J. Future. Excuse me. So we're gonna play level 16. It's the next one. That's why I'm playing it. Let me tell you what. Oh. Okay. Oh. Died real fast. Died right away. Okay. So we're gonna start again. <laughs> I apologize for dying so fast. I thought I was better at this game than I was, but it turns out that I'm just average. I uh, I like to play video games sometimes, but when it means I can't like go to work or play soccer or play dodgeball. My friends like to play dodgeball on Saturdays and today's not Saturday. It's actually Thursday or well, Friday depending on which time zone you're in. It's all about what you can do as opposed to what you like to do. And uh, since all I can do right now is play video games, that's what I'm gonna do. So. Here's the thing about this level. This reminds me a lot of my days as a youth with my cousins. We used to go down into the sewers and we would explore like urban explorations. If you've ever been to Kansas City or Minneapolis, they got a lot of condemned buildings. They got a lot of buildings that aren't locked up so securely. You can just go inside of them and explore them and whatever. There's not much in there because everything cool that was in there has already been graffitied or tagged or stolen or removed or destroyed with a baseball bat or whatever by me. So, um, oh, excuse me. So, oh my god. <laughs> I apologize for this, folks. So, so, urban exploration. We used to go down into the sewers. There was one time we went down into the sewers and we found, uh, we found what looked like an old, old, like, hobo hideout. Like, bums had been living there for a while. But then they suddenly left one day and they just left all the stuff there. Maybe they died or something. I don't know. Maybe they got arrested for being homeless. I guess it's a crime in the U.S. now. You can't be homeless without a, like a pass or whatever. Or like a welfare slip. I don't know what the thing they use is anymore because it's all the same to me. I'm not... Okay, so here's the thing. I'm not on welfare. I'm not homeless. I don't get any sort of, any sort of uh, supplementary income because... Uh, I'm a hard worker. I do all I can to make a living, and uh, and I support my younger brother. He is disabled, but he is uh, me and my my dad raised him to be above leeching off of the government, and he's disabled because he's got uh, the autism, which is something that uh, most of us are familiar with these days. Because I think the rate of autism is something like uh, one in eighty-eight these days, and pretty much everybody knows at least 88 people. If you don't have 88 friends on Facebook, you're probably a loser. You probably watch too many YouTube Let's Plays of people playing Crash Bandicoot 2. And uh, if you got rid of your Facebook, then kudos to you. But uh, that just means that you're socially inept, I guess. I got rid of my Facebook, but that's only because I uh, had some people that I wanted to stop trying to stalk me. 
I did set up a new Facebook with a new uh, with a new name that I normally use for my real life human name, but uh, but uh, only I've only got like ten friends on there. Most of them are my immediate family. Some of them are my grandpas and my grandmas, and then one of them is my best friend from college. And we didn't do gay stuff together, so don't ask. We didn't do gay stuff. I would never do gay stuff with another man. Um, I would do gay stuff with a woman. So, <laughs> ladies. Um, oh, fuck. So, yeah. Pardon me. But, uh, yeah, so we're playing... Basically, we're doing this here. Oh, I lost my train of thought completely. Oh, I was, uh talking about Facebook, is that right? I was talking about Facebook and how it's crazy to uh, not have a Facebook these days, to be like uh, sans Facebook, if you at catch my drift. Um, basically, if you have, if you don't have a Facebook and you're trying to apply for a job, your employers will look you up on Facebook and they will find that you don't have one and they will think that that's weird and they will probably not hire you. And that is a shame. Let me tell you what, that is a shame that they would not hire you for not having a Facebook, but that's just the way that some people like to do things these days, if you know what I'm saying. I think that it's unreasonable to not hire somebody just because they don't have a, fa don't have a Facebook, but uh, what can I say? I'm not in a position to hire anybody. I'm not like a, I don't work for any companies that uh, do hiring. I don't work at like a, like a placement agency or a whatever, a temp agency is what they're called these days, I believe. Uh, that's not what I do, that's not my thing. And even though I wouldn't mind hiring somebody, pardon me, who doesn't have a Facebook, I'm not here to make judgment calls. I uh, I know several people who think that that's ridiculous, but they are all self-employed, they make uh, they make their living doing uh, like programming stuff. They like are freelance programmers, I guess is the term that you would use because they uh, learned how to program Java and C++ in high school and they built up a reputation before they ever got, had to go to college. So by that point in their life, they were already bringing in the dough. Even though they weren't making more than like $30,000 a year, that's still a pretty good amount, right? 30000 Honestly, I make like 25000 a year. And that's only because I don't work every day. I, if I worked every day, like a normal human being should do, then I would make a lot more, but uh, I'm kind of lazy. Now, I do work over 40 hours a week, but that's only because I work several jobs. I work uh, two different jobs every week. One of my jobs, I'm like putting boxes up on shelves. The other job, I'm, uh, I'm uh, driving around newspapers from business to business on Sundays and Saturdays and whatever day of the week they need me to go because, uh, oh, excuse me, the news does not stop for nobody. And that includes all businesses, all walks of life, all businesses. They gotta know what's going on. They gotta know if uh, Edward Snowden is committing any treason, or they gotta know if uh, if uh, the U.S. is canceling FIFA for Israel or Palestine or whatever. They gotta know. They just gotta know. It's important to know if that sort of thing is happening in this world because if uh, if Israel can't participate in FIFA, then uh, what do the Jews do? They're pretty much screwed at that point, right? They can't play soccer anymore. Who is to tell the Jews that they can't play soccer? I think soccer is something that everybody should be able to play. I think soccer is the most important sport there is, aside from dodgeball and basketball and American football and uh, baseball, which is also America's pastime. And then uh, I guess tennis is in there too with Anna Kornikova. Um, and then we got soccer. Soccer is so important after those other sports that I can't even put into words how much it bothers me that we won't let, uh, or that, I'm sorry, Palestine won't let, uh, won't let, uh, Israel join the FIFA League in 2015. You know what, the World Cup's coming up again, it's that time of decade, I guess. Every four years they play the World Cup, not every year, not every decade. I don't know. What, what what would be the uh, terminology that you would use for like a four years? Not like a decade, but like four years. I don't know what the terminology would be for that. Like the quadrecade. Is that a word? I'm gonna use that as a word now. Every quadrecade, the uh, the 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 FIFA World Cup affiliates. You know what? Honestly, I don't know enough about soccer to talk about it, so I'm not gonna pretend that I do. So. Here's the thing, we're pretty much done with this episode. I'm gonna go ahead and do my sign off now. So fellas, ladies, boy chicks, machiganas, we are all done with 
this episode. Thank you for watching. Mwah. I appreciate it. Sparkle Dot signing out. Bye, ladies. Mwah.